Hello everyone. So we are going to the last part of the cholesterol. So here we are going to discuss how the steroid hormones they are synthesized from the cholesterol as well as vitamin D how it gets synthesized from the cholesterol so we all know that these steroid hormones they used to play different role in our body this steroid hormone determines between the sexes both male and female so how this steroid hormone they are synthesized in our body from the cholesterol so what are the reactions which generally takes place on the cholesterol to turn it into a potent hormone that is a steroid hormone to control the different function of our body moreover how this steroid hormone they acts on the cells of the body so this part we are going to discuss here apart from that how this vitamin d it forms from the cholesterol we are going to discuss in brief in this particular presentation so the first part it is the synthesis of the steroid hormone so Basically, the synthesis of the steroid hormone from, from the cholesterol. So, how this steroid hormone they are going to get synthesized from the cholesterol. Here we are going to see. First of all, you see, here I have given you a chart where it is clearly depicted that this cholesterol they first form a compound with a 21 carbon compound. It forms a 21 carbon compound. This compound is known as a pregnant neuron. And this pregnant loan it is get converted into the progesterone and finally they get converted into different types of the steroid hormone like cortisol, aldosterone and estradiol. So what are the different reactions which takes place in this conversion we are going to discuss here with. So first of all you should know that the cholesterol it becomes or it is the precursor for the synthesis of all the five classes of the steroid hormone so what are the five classes of the steroid hormone so we are going to start with the class one so basically first class of the steroid hormone it is the glucocorticoids it's a cortisol it is one of the most prime or commonly used uh, steroid hormone in the human body the next one it is the mineral corticoids so example it is your aldosterone the next one it is your process thin example is your progesterone then androgen here comes the classic example of testosterone and finally the estrogen so these are the estradiols which are found in the human body so now if we see again in the synthesis of the steroid hormone from the cholesterol so basically you see first of all the primary organs which actually involve in the synthesis or you can say biosynthesis are the gonads and the adrenal cortex these gonads and adrenal cortex they are considered as the primary organ for synthesis of the steroid hormone apart from that the placenta in pregnant females this is also considered as the center or site for synthesis of the steroid hormone because this placenta will play a role in maintaining the pregnancy by synthesizing the progesterone in the female now in the steroid hormone if we again review the structure of the steroid hormone there is a side chain right so in the steroid hormone sorry in the cholesterol you, you, you are going to have your one side chain so what actually happens here so in the steroid hormone the side chain of the cholesterol it is either shortened i repeat the side chain of the cholesterol if we see the structure of the cholesterol there you are going to get one side chain right this side chain of this cholesterol it is going to get cut off or shortened or sometimes it it is completely removed right now this steroid hormone abbreviated as the sh this steroid hormones you should know one thing that these steroid hormones are not stored for release after their synthesis i repeat these steroid hormone are not stored for release after their synthesis means once these steroid hormones are formed in your body immediately they act on they are never stored like other hormones because they these steroid hormones they are generally synthesized in the human body as per the need of the body right now the level of the circulating steroid hormone in your body 
or about the level is either for the level of the progesterone or for the testosterone it is solely controlled by the rate of synthesis so you can demarcate in this ways that if you find the level of progesterone in some person or in some sorry in some females or level of estrogen or level of testosterone whatever it is the level of this steroid hormone actually they are somehow demark they are somehow depicting the rate of synthesis means the rate of synthesis it is directly proportional to the amount of the steroid hormone that is found in the body because this steroid hormone they are not stored they are synthesized and they act immediately in the body and this overall rate of the synthesis of the steroid hormone it is controlled by the signals which are sent from the cns basically the brain right now the activation of the synthesis of the steroid hormone so who has who is going to activate or who is going to stimulate it's the brain right so this activation of the synthesis it involves actually what it involves once the signal it comes from the brain immediately it stimulates both the hydrolysis of the cholesterol ester so we know this cholesterol they form uh, they are generally stored in the ester form right we have discussed in our first slide so it immediately the once the signal it comes from the brain it immediately starts the hydrolysis of the cholesterol ester and uptake of this cholesterol so once this cholesterol ester they are hydrolyzed immediately you are going to get the free cholesterol as well as the long chain fatty acid regarding which i have already discussed that this cholesterol as it is a derived alcohol compound and this fatty acid now this long chain fatty acid when long chain fatty acid and this cholesterol that is a derived alcohol they conjugate they form a star so hydrolysis of this it will of this compound a cholesterol is it will immediately release the cholesterol and the free fatty acid now this cholesterol which has been derived from the hydrolysis of the cholesterol ester it is now or it will be now taken up by the mitochondria of the cells in the target organ so suppose the target organ it is the testis now immediately the cholesterol will be taken up by the mitochondria of the testis right now in the next part you see synthesis of the steroid hormones from the cholesterol so basically here i am going to give you the details so how they are generally produced from the precursor in the human body so right so let's start with stepwise process so basically you see all the steroids we know that they are derived from the cholesterol right all the steroidal hormone right now a series of actually enzymatic steps it occurs in the mitochondria of the target cell as well as the endoplasmic reticulum so i already told you that suppose if the body needs to produce uh, any corticoids suppose a mineral corticoids the cells responsible for it it will do what immediately it will take up the cholesterol now it is going to convert it now what are the organelles which are responsible for this conversion basically the mitochondria and the endoplasmic reticulum of the stereogenic tissue means those tissues which are responsible for the production right this stereo steroidogenic tissue convert this cholesterol into all the other steroid hormones and the intermediates right now you see the rate limiting step in the synthesis of the cholesterol the rate limiting step it is the transport of the free cholesterol from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria i again repeat this thing see the site of synthesis it is the mitochondria right or sometimes it's the endoplasmic reticulum so the rate of synthesis of the cholesterol hormone it is the transport means the rate at which the cholesterol it is transported from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria i repeat the rate at which the cholesterol it is transported from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria it is the rate limiting means if that process is slow then the rate of synthesis of the uh, your steroid hormone will also become slow now you should know that this step it is actually carried out by the stereogenic acute regulatory protein so these are a special class of protein so they are abbreviated as the star so the star, the, this star it stands for the stereogenic acute regulatory proteins right now you should know that this cholesterol precursors it comes from the cholesterol are synthesized within the cell from the acetate right now from 
the cholesterol starts stores in the intracellular droplets or from the uptake of cholesterol containing low density lipoprotein i repeat this thing see the cholesterol precursor which comes for the cholesterol synthesized within the cell from acetate about this process we have already discussed in our first slide right from the cholesterol ester and and it starts and they are stored in the intracellular lipid droplets or from the uptake of the cholesterol containing low density lipoproteins right and lastly the lipoproteins taken taken up by or taken up from the plasma are most important when steroidogenic cells are chronically stimulated i repeat lipoproteins taken up by taken up from the plasma so we know that the lipoproteins they are the carrier of the cholesterol right they are the carrier of the cholesterol in a human body so the lipoproteins taken up from the plasma are most important these lipoproteins are very important when the stereogenic cells the cells which are responsible for the synthesis of the steroid hormones are chronically stimulated now these are going to get stimulated right now if we see the first step of conversion the first step of conversion is nothing but the conversion of the cholesterol to a intermediate which is known as the pregnenolone so how it takes place so this is the structure of the cholesterol this is the structure of the pregnenolone i hope uh, i am repeating this is the cholesterol this is the pregnenolone you see this is the side chain of the cholesterol right now here the side chain will be cleaved i already told you this led the synthesis of the steroid hormone it led to or the shortening of the side chain of the cholesterol the shortening of the side chain of the cholesterol it led to the synthesis of the steroid hormone this is a step which is common for all steroid hormone synthesis right now these steps actually this cleaving of the side chain of the cholesterol it generally occurs in the mitochondrial membrane i repeat the shortening of the side chain of the cholesterol for synthesis of the steroid hormone it generally takes place in the mitochondrial membrane so once the side chain it has been cut off you will get a c21 compound because six carbon from the ring or from the structure of the cholesterol it has been removed now you are going to get one the c21 compound and this compound it is known as the pregnenolone and which may be accurately described as the mother of all the steroidal hormone synthesis because it is the primary step it is common for everyone that first of all the removal of the six side chain carbon it is the primary step it is common for synthesis of the all steroid hormone right now you see here we are going in details or in brief about the steps so basically you see here the first step it is the removal of the six carbon of the side chain right so six carbon atom will be removed from the side chain first step the next step this step it is common for all the steroid hormone synthesis because all the steroid hormone synthesis they have a precursor this precursor it is known as the pregnenolone so from the cholesterol the pregnenolone is going to form and from the pregnenolone all the other steroid hormone they are going to get synthesized in the human body now these steps actually it occurs in the mitochondrial membrane i already discussed about you now you see once you are cutting off or you are nicking off six carbon side chain from the cholesterol you are going to get one c21 compound and this c21 compound it is also known as the pregnenolone it is the mother of all the steroid as i already told you right now this step you should remember so there is an enzyme complex i repeat there is an enzyme complex this enzyme complex it is known as the cholesterol desmolase right this cholesterol desmolase it actually hydroxylates this enzyme cholesterol desmolase i repeat cholesterol desmolase it actually hydroxylates c20 and c22 carbon of the cholesterol the newly formed actually the pregnenolone and it clips to yield different or it clips to yield the pregnenolone i repeat there is an enzyme complex this enzyme complex it is known as the cholesterol desmolase it actually hydroxylates the c20 and c22 and it clips to yield the pregnenolone right so here you see how this desmolase it works so this is the ring right of the cholesterol 
carbon now we are going to leave off the six side chain carbon from this structure of the cholesterol and two hydroxyl group at a position 20 and 22 they are going to introduce by the enzyme the small is in the mitochondria so see here the two carbon this is the uh, the two hydroxyl group the one it is the 20 and another one is at the 22 right they are going to get introduced and finally you are going to get the structure of the pregnant nolon now we are going to get in detail so how the different steroids they are formed so first of all you see this cholesterol they are activated right now they will enter the pathway first they are going to form the pregnant hormone from the pregnant hormone the important enzyme the important steroid sorry not enzyme progesterone it is going to form right from this progesterone actually what actually happens another enzyme will act on this progesterone this enzyme it is known as 21 hydroxylase right this 21 hydroxylase will act on the progesterone it will yield a intermediate compound which is known as 11 deoxycortisone this 11 deoxycortisone subsequently it get converted into aldosterone similarly again on progesterone 11 uh, again on position another means uh, again another part is there sometimes what actually happens in this progesterone another or the same enzyme sorry the same enzyme it will work the 21 hydroxylase to convert it into 11 deoxycortisol here one it is cortisone another one it is cortisol right this will convert the progesterone into the steroid hormone which is known as the cortisol now this is actually the general pathway right now again if you see the cholesterol they generally get converted into pregnant hormone right we know that this is a 21 carbon compound right this converted into progesterone right this progesterone now what actually happens right see this progesterone it get converted into another intermediate this intermediate it is known as androstenedione this androstenedione now what actually happened it get converted into a stone now it is actually produced this stone it is actually produced in both male and female you should know that right now sometimes it also get converted in males into testosterone the pathway actually this endosterone the conversion of this endosterone to the testosterone actually it, it actually happens in the testis in male and sometimes it get converted into the estradiol and this pathway actually it continues here in the ovary right now you should know one thing that in obese man right in obese person the amount of the cholesterol is generally remain high always right so overproduction of estrogen in obese patient uh, person it is found that in the obese person or obese man overproduction of estrogen in the fat cells can cause a clinical condition which is also known as the gynecomastia the gynecomastia can be described as a excessive male breast development so the fatty person they sometimes develop the breast so this actually happens due to the overproduction of the estrogen in the fat cells right now you see the transport the transformation of the cholesterol into steroid hormone so this is the cholesterol right it get converted into progesterone it can get converted into cortisol testosterone sometimes it also get converted into vitamin d and estradiol now the groups of steroid hormones so we have already come to know there are five basic basic groups so first of all the progestins so what is the role of progestin basically this progestin actually they regulate all the events which generally takes place during the time of pregnancy and the progesterone it is the main hormone which actually helps in maintaining the pregnancy next one it is your glucocorticoids so what this glucocorticoids it controls so basically this glucocorticoids they affect the basal metabolism of the human body moreover it controls the host defense mechanism your immunity is controlled by this glucocorticoids moreover blood pressure response to stress sometimes it also promote the process of the gluconeogenesis and it's some and sometimes it suppresses the inflammation reaction like uh, and it is generally done by the cortisol so you can 
I can add you add one thing here. Actually, there are many classes of the semi-synthetic cortisol which are generally used in the anti-inflammatory cream. Thus, this you can say the cortisol actually they suppress the inflammation. The next one it is the mineralocorticoids, right? The mineralocorticoids uh, it is a class of steroid hormone actually how it controls the human body or basic physiological process of the human body. So basically the mineralocorticoids they affect the electrolyte balance in your body and ion transport. So the, moreover these mineralocorticoids they regulate the balance by promotion or promoting the reabsorption in the kidney. This mineral corticoids they control the reabsorption of different ions in the kidney. What are the different ions? Basically, the sodium ion, the chlorine ion, and as well as the carbonate ion. These are the three ions which are generally controlled. Their reabsorption is generally controlled by basically the mineral corticoids that is the aldosterone. The next one it is your androgen this androgen actually it promotes the male sexual differentiation right so spermatogenesis and more about to maintain the male sexual characteristic this actually androgen they control for example here we have the androstenedione or the testosterone and the last one it is your estrogen it is the female sex hormone it generally controls all the secondary sexual characteristic in the female right which involve the reproduction and also it supports the female characteristic so basically it is done by the estrone or estradiol now <coughs> these are the male sex hormones the structure are given here the testosterone and the endosterone right and these are the female sex hormones which include the estradiol estrone and progesterone now how this steroid hormone i am telling you that they are going to control the different physiological condition like to demarcate between the male and female so how they are going to act how this steroid hormone they are going to act on the cells first of all you should know that as the steroid hormone they are synthesized from the cholesterol they are hydrophobic in nature i repeat as they are synthesized from the cholesterol they are hydrophobic in nature if they are hydrophobic in nature then how they can get enter into the cell right if they cannot enter into the cell they cannot produce any sort of signaling right. so what is the method they the steroid hormone they actually adopt to control the different physiological process so here we are going to discuss with a diagram you see this diagram so what actually happens we have a secondary receptor or can say messenger for steroid hormone so you see here the steroid hormones they are hydrophobic right so they are carried by specific carrier proteins from the point of their release to the target site right suppose if we are considering the testes the point of release it is the testes from the testes now this testosterone they are going to get released or they are going to act on the target site right to develop the secondary male sexual characteristics so what actually happens as they cannot bypass the cell easily so they are going to use a different mechanism so what actually they perform so in the target site once suppose this steroid hormone they are carried to the target site this hormone actually what they do they used to pass through the plasma membrane they steroid hormone they generally used to pass through this plasma membrane of the target cell right by the method of simple diffusion they are going to simply diffuse into the plasma membrane of the target site right and they bind to the specific receptor protein in the nucleus so they are directly going to the nucleus right so this hormone receptor complex actually you see here you see here it is the basic this is the hormone this is the receptor complex this hormone receptor complex it acts by binding to the highly specific dna sequence in the and it alters the gene expression so this steroid hormone it is expressed or it is produced from the target a from the particular cell suppose the testis it will come through the blood right now it will diffuse through the plasma membrane it will diffuse to the plasma membrane and this is actually the membrane receptor right now from here they are going to activate a second messenger and this will lead to the change in the 
gene expression of the nucleus right so basically after this we are going to start with the synthesis of the vitamin d from the cholesterol so how this vitamin d it is synthesized in our body so first of all you should know that the vitamin d is a steroid pro hormone i repeat vitamin d is a steroid pro hormone and by various metabolic changes in the body it gives rise to the hormone known as calcitriol i repeat this vitamin d it get converted into the calcitriol and this actually plays the central role this vitamin d actually plays the central role in the calcium and phosphate metabolism in the human body thus you can say the regulator of the calcium and the phosphate in the human body it is none other than your vitamin d right moreover the formation of pro vitamin d so this is the another step so the pro vitamin d it is going to form in the human body so the pro vitamin d is also known as the 7 dehydro cholesterol now this step involved the vitamin d actually they are generated from the pro vitamins ergosterol and 7 dehydro cholesterol i repeat these are the pro vitamin d means these are the precursor right this vitamin d it is con means it is converted or it is formed the vitamin d it is formed or converted from the 7 dehydrocholesterol and sometimes also from the ergosterol but the reaction the conversion of 7 dehydrocholesterol to vitamin d or ergosterol to vitamin d it is always catalyzed by the presence of sunlight so that's why we always used to say that the vitamin d it's a free vitamin which are found in the human body you just need to stand for some time in the sunlight just to synthesize the vitamin d because you have the precursor for the synthesis of the vitamin d in your body once the sunlight is available in your body it get converted or this precursor they got converted into the vitamin d right now this argosterols they also occurs in the plant right moreover 7 dehydrocholesterol it occurs in the animals right now uv light what is the role of this uv light so the uv light from the sunlight whatever it comes it actually cleaves the beading of both the compound i'll go i'm going to give you the rings so it is going to cleave the beading of both this compound of the ergosterol as well as the 7 dehydrocholesterol right now ergocalciferol it is also known as the vitamin d2 it is generally formed in the plants you should know that this ergocalciferol they are generally abundant in the plant moreover the cholecalciferol this is known as the vitamin d3 it is generally formed when the body or when the skin it get exposed in the sunlight it occurs in the animals right so the, basically we have the two types of vitamin d vitamin d2 and vitamin d3 vitamin d2 it is known as the argocalciferol it generally forms in the plants and vitamin d3 it is the cholecalciferol it is found in the humans or you can say mammals now a specific transport protein which is also known as vitamin d binding proteins actually it binds the vitamin d3 i repeat there you have a specific transport protein in the human body we have a specific transport protein in the human body this is also known as vitamin d binding proteins right so it binds the vitamin d3 there as we as we already discussed that vitamin d3 it is from abundant in the human body right now it is going to get bind with the vitamin d3 that is the cholecalciferol and it moves from the skin or intestine to the liver once this cal cholecalciferol is formed the binding protein will try to move it from the skin or the intestine sometimes in the intestine it also forms it is moved to the liver where this d3 that is the cholecalciferol it undergo hydroxylation in the 25th carbon position right so now you see again in the synthesis of the vitamin d from the cholesterol so what 
are those steps I am repeating again here you see here I am depicting the way it forms so basically from the diet right it goes to the liver then the enzyme 25 dehydroxylase it acts right to form this particular product so 25 hydrox hydro here you see one hydroxyl group has been added so this is the d3 then again it gets converted or it's sent and in the kidney it's sent to the kidney then there one again another enzyme it acts on it so it's a one hydroxylase so and sequentially it get converted into its active form active form of the hormones right so again i repeat here you see here now this 125 dihydroxy calciferol i repeat the active form of d3 it is actually the 125 dihydroxy two position in two position you are going to get the hydroxyl group calciferol it is the active form of the vitamin d right so how it's formed generally First, it is the active form of vitamin D. You know that, right? So now the beta ring or the, you can say the B ring, it gets open, and then first hydroxylation it takes place in the position one. So it generally takes place in the position one. Then in the second hydroxylation it takes place in the position twenty-five. Thus it produces the one alpha. This component is known as a one alpha twenty-five dihydroxy D three. It is the active form of vitamin D. This is generally the dihydroxy calciferol, or you can say it's the vitamin D3, right? So this production, actually the production, it is regulated by its own concentration. The concentration of the precursor, it will regulate the secretion, or you can say synthesis of the D3. Moreover, other two things which regulates the synthesis of this particular vitamin these two hormones are actually this is a hormone we all know that the parathyroid gland is secreted a particular hormone it is known as a parathyroid hormone this parathyroid hormone it is responsible the parathyroid hormone it is responsible for controlling the concentration of the active vitamin D3. Moreover, the serum phosphate, this serum phosphate, it actually sends a feedback for the synthesis of the active form of vitamin D, that is the vitamin D3. So lastly, I would like to thank each of you for the patience hearing. If you like my video, you can press this icon you can share this video with your classmates as well as your colleagues and for further notification from this channel you can press the bell icon so thank you once again everyone